her mouth flies north. That's how Vogue magazine once described Lauren Hutton, the supermodel who shot back into the spotlight decades after she became one of the world's most famous faces. At a time when waif models are the rage, Hutton's reappearance on the scene has caused a big stir. So Judd Rose talked to Lauren Hutton about beauty, age, and being back in fashion. Before Cindy, or Christy, or Claudia, before Linda and Vendela and Naomi, before them all, there was the girl next door. You used to be a model, didn't you? Yes, I did. I still am, believe it or not. Today, the girl next door lives next door to Skid Row, here in New York's Bowery. A lot of people are going to see this, hear you talking about the neighborhood you live in, they're going to say, she's not. This is not the life that she's supposed to be living. Um, I think it keeps my life in perspective. I live in a very extreme life on the other side. I mean, I know it, 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 seem, it seems like it's a very wide arc. My life has a lot of range, you know? That it does. Lauren Hutton's life has always ranged from Harper's Bazaar to just plain bizarre. But nothing in her career is more surprising than that she is once again one of the world's top models, just two months shy of her 50th birthday. And are you looking at this big 5-0 with fear and loathing? No, I, uh, I think it should be the peak, the top of the mountain of, uh, uh, of life. See, when you're 50, you don't have the aches and pains of old age but you also don't have the horrible anxieties of youth. You know, you don't, will someone love me? Will I do well at my career? Will I do this? Will I do that? Point taken, but you're not trying to convince us that you'd rather be 50 than 20. Yes, I am. Quiet, please. And why not? In a business where youth is everything, Lauren Hutton at 50 is hotter than ever. You don't see results. Revlon will give you your money back. She's once again modeling for Revlon, a company that 20 years ago signed her to a million-dollar deal, the first such contract ever for a model. Nikki, sweetheart! She's making movies again after a long break. Her new one, co-starring Gerard Depardieu, began filming last month in New York. Hutton was even the focus of an editorial in the New York Times, which noted that she looks like she's been around, paid her dues, and is still having a very good time. I think that the fact that she is back and doing so wonderfully well reflects what's happening in America and in the, in the perception of women and women's beauty. What's happening, according to Vogue editor Anna Wintour, is that we now embrace the idea that a middle-aged woman can be beautiful. Before, people took it very, you know, too seriously. It was like 40 was this terrible cut-off age that your kind of life was over. You might as well retire to the country and grow roses. Whereas I think for a lot of women right now, 40 is the beginning. And Lauren, again, is a symbol of that. Blame it on the boomers. As the men and women of the Clinton generation reach middle age, well, it's encouraging to see one of their own age so well. Makes them feel better about themselves. Makes them feel that growing old has taken on a whole new look. It looks like Tina Turner, age 53, and Candace Bergen, 47. If this is Catherine Deneuve at 50, clearly midlife doesn't have to be a crisis. But for Lauren Hutton, it did start out that way. It took about five years for me to turn 40. How do you make it? And it was a real bruiser. <laughs> it was horrible. What? Tell me. <laughs> well, first of all, I couldn't get work. There was absolutely no work modeling, of course. And, uh, and you think that's because of your age? Oh, no question. You, you, you were invisible. Around about 30, you became invisible. I have this mental image of Lauren Hutton sitting there at the age of 45 or whatever, looking in the bathroom mirror at herself. And Crying and moaning and, and pouting and sulking. And... Is that all true? Yeah. After all, it had been more than a decade since her days as the most celebrated cover girl of the 70s. Long gone, too, were her days as a would-be movie star, which amounted to smiling pretty in a string of really bad movies. Do you, do you come here a lot? Whenever I'm on the crowd. I had this sort of glamorous, interesting life. I could go out to big parties in New York every night, and big, big events and charities and big glamorous things, but uh, the work I was doing wasn't interesting to me. Hutton was never the likeliest choice for the work to begin with. Raised in the Florida swamps, she went to New York at 19, hoping to earn enough money to see the world, got a job as a Playboy bunny, then found out models made more and decided to try that. 
She was just over 5'7", short for a model, and with her gap-toothed smile, hardly a classic beauty. But Vogue editor Diana Vreeland brought her to the legendary photographer Richard Avedon, and together they made Hutton one of the most recognized faces in the world. Generally speaking, do you think that you're beautiful? Generally speaking, no. Um, I'm... When I'm happy and not harassed and not overworked, I'm handsome. And then sometimes I'm downright ugly. Oh, come on. Oh, yes. Had I never become a model, I would have never looked the way I look now. In other words, you have the most skilled hands from all over the world working on you over a period of years. Yeah, and but you've got to have the raw wrong. material to work with. Yes, raw material. But there's a big difference between raw material and uh, the eventual product. Let sure. me tell you. Hutton never confused what the camera saw and what she really was. She was determined to be more than a pretty face. So she spent much of her time off traveling, including dozens of trips to Africa. Once, while staying with a tribe of pygmies, she joined them in a meal of termites. You want to go for a clean headshot. You hold them by the wings, and you try to bite into their head, and then pull the wings off and drop them down. Going from eating wiggling beetles to being photographed by Richard Avedon, what a schizophrenic existence. It was the antidote to my life. I had these extremes that I lived in, and um, I think it sort of kept me more or less in the middle. You know, people would have looked at you, I think, back then, five, ten years ago, and thought, she's gorgeous, she's famous, I presume she's rich, you have it all. Well, I ended up not having a family. I ended up not having children, and I've run out of eggs, and I said, I want to Does that really hurt? Yeah. Of course it does. Why didn't you get married? Well, I used to say that, that marriage is great for taxes, good for, for children, and bad for romance. Do you regret that? No, I, I, I have had and do have very strong relationships. Hutton's currently involved with a man who directs some of her commercials. Recently, they went on vacation together to New Mexico. We caught up with Hutton there and asked her about the rumors that have circulated for years. Rumors that she's gay. One published report in the 70s linked her with the British actress, Julie Christie. I'm still trying to fight the good fight uh, for heterosexuality. And men, but it's a tough, tough fight a lot of the time. It's all us girls now, huh? Um, but when that rumor came out, it was pretty funny because I had never met Julie Christie. And uh, it seemed to capture the public imagination in a big way. And people that I, I was away in Mexico and I didn't know anything about it when I came back. Uh, my agent, Rusty, said to me, what are you doing here? I thought you were off in Jersey with Julie Christie, decorating a house of antiques. So, I assume he was kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, I imagine it, it comes from uh, me not being uh, married. You know, people not uh, having an idea about that and not having children. So essentially your attitude about it is, hey, let them whisper, who cares? Yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> Recently, people have been whispering about other things, too, about why she looks so good. Well, I have been having people tell me that I've had plastic surgery since I was 40 years old. Have you? Um, no. Why not? I, I would not have a full facelift. It's like, I mean, there, but there are little things that you can do Nips and that tops. if... Well, there are some real big nips and tucks that are pretty dangerous. But I wouldn't say because if I do, I don't want anyone knowing or I don't want, you know, it's just your own business. I'll try one more time because it's my job. How much of that is what you were born with? <laughs> I look a lot different than when I was born, Judd. Billion dollar smile. <laughs> That's it, right? Natural or not, what she does look is great for her age. That became apparent in 1989 when Hutton posed for an ad campaign for Barney's, the chic New York store. It was a hit, and once again, Hutton got offers to do magazine covers, commercials, and fashion layouts with women half her age, like 24-year-old supermodel Christy Turlington. I think she's a, she's a very good role model for me to see that um, age doesn't necessarily mean um, that your beauty fades in any way. I think she's gotten more and more attractive, actually, as she's gotten older. Um, so I, I, I hope that I can maintain the same kind of um, aging pattern as she has. And just how does she maintain that aging pattern? Getting to the gym, eating the right food, 
stopping smoking, stopping drinking, or, do, you know, just any kind of drug that you're taking, you know, too many aspirin, too many anything. Well, you now, often. that's an interesting thing, because we've observed in the brief time we spend together that you don't seem to work out too much. You spend too much time in the sun. You're I've always had tan. A, I've had you, a bad... Uh, you bad smoke a lot, and you go to places like Taco Bell for lunch. So exactly what are you talking about? Most of the time, I follow my rules. But then I have, uh, you know, spells. Southern women have spells. Truth is, most women won't look like Hutton at 50 or 20 or any other age. And while fashion may be more accepting of middle age, this is still more typical of what's promoted as an ideal, rail-thin, blank-faced, and prepubescent. Still, after years of being a model, Hutton sees herself as a role model, an example to women her age of all that they can be. She even says she might write a book of sex tips for the middle age. I have a much better time in bed now than I did when I was 25. Why is that? And I had a pretty damn good time in bed, too, I'll tell you. And it's always been my favorite place. Why are things better in bed now? Because I'm older and more relaxed and smarter and finer, and I ask more questions, and I say, how's this feel? <laughs> and it has to do with growing up. And so it does. The girl next door has grown up and in the process added a few new wrinkles to our notions of age and beauty. Fifty years of experience have taught Lauren Hutton that you of luxury is my idea of luxury is taking a pee under the stars next to a sagebrush with a possibility of a rattlesnake coming by just for a good bit of have a good life. I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> We'll be back in a moment with a surprise move in the Menendez trial.